Kirkland, the home of the Nets in a fine Eastern Conference battle at the Barclays Center. Hi, everyone. This is Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr. Going to bring you the NBA right here on 2K Sports. A quick check now of the starting lineups for both teams. A premier performer we'll see tonight, Darren Williams. He always comes to play. He can be a frustrating player to coach because as talented as he is, he often loses his cool. And it can take his focus away from the game. And the reality is the opponents know that, Steve, so they're out there looking to get under his skin and cause one of his meltdowns. Now here's DeRozan. Puts it up from 17. The shot no good. Great D that time from Johnson. In my opinion, Brooke Lopez, guys, quite possibly is the best scoring seven-footer in the game. He has terrific skills on the low block. And he's able to step out and knock that outside shot down from out to the three-point line. And so it's the Nets getting on the board first. Gay gets a screen from Valenciunas. Knocked loose. Pierce with the steal. It's Williams with the drive. Well, probably the right play defensively. If you can't get the block, send them to the free throw line. Don't give them an easy two. No easy buckets inside. Force free throws and work to keep them out of the lane next time around. And he sinks the second. Brooklyn on defense. It's a three-point game. Lowry against Williams. Lowry drives in. Banked in off the glass. And for Brooke Lopez last season, Steve, almost 20 points a game, shooting over 50%. His best season ever, Kevin. I think he's really evolved into one of the top centers in the league. A, a big-time elite interior threat. And as you know, that's kind of rare these days in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Well, he won't miss many of those, especially with the defender not in the best of positions there. On defense, the Raptors. Williams for three. Good, and it's Johnson with the assist that time. A good open look, and he splashes home the three. Lowry against Williams. Here's DeRozan. They grab their own miss, and so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. The Raptors shooting their initial free throws of the game right here. That free throw missing. Well, you know, it seems that Amir Johnson is the kind of player who's always in and out of a starting lineup. Never really had a chance to lock down that starting role for an extended period of time last year, but was pretty good when he did get the nod. Now here's Williams. Johnson kicks to Pierce. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. And Lopez gets it to go. That's exactly what they had in mind on that possession. Lowry passes to Gay. Lowry a screen on Lopez. Nice work there coming off the screen. And for Amir Johnson, it's pretty unbelievable, but he's approaching a decade in the NBA. The kid from Los Angeles, it just seemed like the other day, you know, he was just coming to the league at just 26 years of age, and here he is almost a decade in the league. Yeah, drafted out of Westchester High School in Los Angeles. You wonder how his development would have been different if he'd gone the college route, but he does seem to be coming on now the last couple of seasons. Here's Gay. Darren Williams picking up that last basket. Gay dishes to Lowry. Now the feed to Johnson. Soft touch off the glass. That is some real serious dime dropping there. Exquisite assist. Johnson outside. Into Lopez. That's tipped. It's stolen by Valanciunas. Now here's DeRozan. That falls. Nice feed that time from Kyle Lowry. Crafty pass work there, getting it down low for the easy deuce. Williams with the ball. Here's Johnson. Another one falls for Brooklyn. First quarter of action, just under three and a half minutes played. Lowry against Williams. Lowry kicks to Johnson. Now here's DeRozan, guarded closely. And there are the Raptors with another bucket. That's a clean look they gave him there, fellas, and he drains those. On the wing, Williams, now recovering. 
sinks that one from the post. And that's now seven points for Williams. Raptors trail by three. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. I had a chance to catch up with Jason Kidd, and he said a big factor in this game will be how well they're able to handle Kyle Lowry. He admitted being a fan of his game, saying he's a tough athletic guard who really competes. Defense, rebounding, attack the paint, he'll take it to you. We've got to be ready to match his motor and his aggressiveness. Kevin, are they up to it? Always great to hear from you, Doris. And it's DeRozan missing. Well, head coach Jason Kidd, that's a phrase I didn't expect to hear this quickly, but uh, Kidd wasted no time. Only a matter of weeks after he announced his retirement as a player, he was named the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. And, uh, it's going to be interesting to see the transition. Kidd, obviously, great basketball IQ, so well respected as a person in the league. I think it's just a matter of time before he really finds his footing and becomes an excellent coach. Another miss by DeRozan. You know, he just hasn't looked right to me. A bit out of sorts, if you will. Something's off with his mechanics, um, at least as I look at it. And there's Lopez. That's good on the assist from Kevin Garnett. Lopez has got five. And back to coach Jason Kidd Clark, a rookie at the coaching profession, but one of the most intelligent, respected point guards over his 19 years in the NBA. Yeah, always respected as a leader and his basketball IQ off the chart. So I think he's one of the few guys that could go right from playing to being a successful head coach. Obvious foul. Yeah, he took a hit right there and earned those free throws. Brooklyn shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. And Toronto will go for a different look here. Aaron Gray, he's checked in for Jonas Valanciunas. Hansborough's coming for Amir Johnson. Landry Fields checking in for Rudy Gay. And Terrence Ross is subbed in for DeMar DeRozan. Williams with the block. Outside Williams, Terry outside. Terry off the pick from Blotch. Back to Williams. Here's Evans, and that one's good. Huge advantage for them already. And as well as they played at both ends so far, this lead might continue to grow. Here is Ross. Watch with the steal, and as the first quarter wraps up, already at double digit. Not exactly a close game so far, but as the second quarter starts here, plenty of time for a comeback. And a breakdown here, guys. The hustle stats for Brooklyn. Well, I think the defensive aggressiveness on this player has caught him off guard, playing airtight defense and coming up with the steal. And the other thing they're doing is forcing a lot of turnovers, and that's helping them to get easy points at the other end. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups, courtesy of Gatorade, as the second quarter gets going. So for Toronto right now, DJ Augustine out there with Terrence Ross. Then there's Landry Fields. Then there's Tyler Hansden. And it's Gray in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. Nice soft touch to drop that one in. And that's leading teen. Hey, guys. You know, the Raptors were at the bottom of the Atlantic Division once again this past season, but the silver lining there is that they seem to be improved as a team. The problem is the rest of the division improved right along with them. Augustine against Williams. Augustine passes to Fields. No good on the three. Net shooting a mind-boggling 79% off the floor. Well, the Raptors, the bottom of the Atlantic with a record of 5-11 and 11 against the rest of that division. They'll need to do better than that to climb out of the cellar this season. Well, it's going to take a lot. The Raptors won 34 games last year, but they've still found themselves struggling to win games in the Atlantic. It is a good division, uh, but they can make improvement. There's plenty of talent there, and I think that's going to be one of the keys this year, how well they play against teams in the Atlantic. Now here is Augustine. After the miss from Blotch, dives for it. Six on the shot clock, and Fields kicks to Hansbro. And the rejection by Blotch. And count it, the shot is good. He'll go to the free throw line. And some changes here for the Raptors. Pierce comes in for Reggie Evans. 
and it's Johnson in for Williams. For Toronto, they have converted one of two free throws so far today. Well, this is a good free throw shooting team a year ago. They hit about 79% of their free throws as a unit. And you can't take those numbers lightly, fellas. I mean, their free throw shooting made a difference for them in a lot of their games last season. Here's Lowry after the made shot from Blotch. And here's Lowry. Here's DeRozan. They get the rebound. Hansbro tries again. And the shot is long. Jonas Valanciunas, who's checked in for Toronto. Johnson comes in for Hansbro. Brooklyn leading by 12. Well, you know what, guys? DeMar DeRozan said he watched a lot of tape of Dwayne Wade working on the low block, learning to pass out of double teams and attack weaker defenders. That's definitely an area he can exploit in his own game. Now let's send it to Doris from the sideline. Gentlemen, Rudy Gay and Kyle Lowry came into the league together as rookies with the Memphis Grizzlies and played two and a half years together before Lowry was traded to Houston. Now they're reunited on the Raptors. Lowry said, having Rudy coming in, it's really my brother. We hang out together. We do everything pretty much together. He's also excited about what Rudy brings to the team, saying he can create his own shot. A high flyer. He's a big shot guy. He's going to be an all-star. And guys, with Lowry setting the table, he can help make that a reality. That friendship such a great foundation for their success. Thanks, Doris. And for DeRozan, not a great playmaker, but he has made strides in that area. Yeah, last season he significantly improved his assist-to-turnover ratio, and that's exactly what you want to see out of your shooting guards because even though they're not playmakers as point guards, shooting guards are handling the ball, too, and making plays. Wasted no time on that one. Eight points for Johnson. Well, there you go. If you're going to continue to give up open jump shots, uh, you're not going to get back into this game. Lowry from outside, and that one's good. Boy, they're getting a bunch more threes up here in the second quarter. Yeah, a little trigger happy here, Clark, and you can't win the game with one shot. You've got to vary it up, challenge the defense inside. Now here's Terry. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Garnett is doubled. Open shot, Johnson. Offensive rebound, Nets. And Lopez gets it to go. You know, so many games are decided by which team wins the rebound battle. And that's held true in this one so far, Steve. And even if it's only a modest advantage that they have in that category, it's still a significant factor. On the wing, Johnson. Guarded by Garnett. Another shot. That one's good. And the Brooklyn lead is cut down now to just 11 on the basket from Valanciunas. You know, Kevin, he never gives up on a play. That's what I love about him. He's just one of those guys who will bring effort and energy the entire 48 minutes. And we'd be remiss if we didn't also mention his supreme shot blocking. And he doesn't do it softly. He comes up with emphatic denials. And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? Yes, guys. I was able to hear Dwayne Casey coaching his team during that break. He outlined a new set of priorities for them, the main one being to attack the basket at every opportunity. I'm sure Coach is hoping those changes turn the tide in this game and shrink the deficit before halftime. Back to you, Kevin. And thank you for that, Doris. Now here's Gay. And he gets it to go. That's 10 points for Johnson. Uh, you got to like his shot selection today. He set a good example for the rest of his teammates. You know, it's been a while since the Nets have been one of the feared teams in the East. They had their best season since their days when they would make trips to the finals in the early 2000s. Really an excellent turnaround effort um, from the entire organization. He's been wayward and just off on about everything he's put up in this period. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on DeMar DeRozan. And that'll be his third foul so far. Brooklyn making some changes. Evans, he's checked in for Garnett. And Darren Williams is subbed in for Jason Terry. Now here's Lopez. Nine points in the game so far. Here's Johnson. And he lays it straight in. Johnson's got six in the quarter. 
And for the Nets, who were one of the big turnaround stories from last season, they did it by beating the team, Steve, they were supposed to in the rest of the Eastern Conference. Great record against the East. Yeah, 36 and 16 against their Eastern foes. So uh, pretty solid in that regard. You know, they decided early on that the, the, the key was they had to get home court advantage in the first round. And, and they set their goal and they hit it. Unfortunately, they got knocked off by Chicago in that first round. Well, the Nets have shot a good percentage from the free throw line so far. They've made five out of six. Now the numbers last year for them at the line, not great. Just 73 percent free throw shooting as a team. And you know, whenever they get into a stretch where it looked like maybe they would turn it around at the line, they would immediately take a step back. And Toronto making a change here. Hansbrough's checked in. Now here is Augustine looking for his first basket still in this one. Two second difference between shot clock and game clock. And Kirilenko with a clear path to the hoop. I think that play sort of sums up what we've seen throughout. Just simply being outplayed both sides of the ball. Smart basketball defensively turning into quick points. And that's not going to be able to continue if they hope to get back into this game, Clark. It's a deflating play for your morale. Over to the wing. Here's Hansbro. And so a pretty lopsided game through the first half. Brooklyn ahead, leading by 17. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. I'm alongside Coach Casey and Coach, you guys. Now, presented by Sprint. Welcome, everyone. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. Welcome back to Brooklyn and a beautiful twilight view here of the Brooklyn Bridge. Well, Williams has been great. 13 points and also a block shot. Here is Williams. 17-point lead, their biggest. On the perimeter, the all-star trio of Williams, Johnson, and Pierce. Down low, Kevin Garnett and Brooke Lopez. So that's the lineup for Brooklyn. Dishes it to Lopez. It's stolen by Valanciunas. Now running, there comes Lowry pushing the ball up. Stolen by Pierce. In transition, here come the Nets. Here's Lopez. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. And no question, he got bumped on that shot. Definitely no room for discussion on that one. He shot five of six at the foul line. Well, last year at the free throw line, he was successful 76% of the time. It seems for the past few years, the only time you heard about Brooke Lopez's name was in what the Nets would give up for Dwight Howard. I mean, well, all of that talk goes away now, at least for a minute, because he signed that extension with the Nets. And because of that, I think he was more comfortable, and it showed in his production on the floor. Here's Williams following the score by DeMar DeRozan. Outside Williams. He feeds it to Johnson. A three. No good. And Toronto will come the other way. And for Brooke Lopez, a max contract going into last season. It raised some eyebrows for sure, but the way he's elevated his game, it looks like right now he's been worth every penny. Yeah, I agree with that. First time All-Star, he improved as a shot blocker and a rebounder. And you know, I thought he should have gotten maybe some votes at least for most improved player last season. Big reason why the Nets improved so much. That's a good point. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Kevin for Jason Kidd a Hall of Fame caliber point guard in his 19 years as a player about a week after retiring it was announced he returned to the league as head coach of the Brooklyn Nets he said quote I went from being one of the oldest guys in the league to being a rookie all over again Kevin he said it makes him feel young again nice to have him back thanks Doris here's Gay after the made shot from Blotch and that one's goodbye Gay no matter what they've tried, the D just has not been able to deny them the ball in the paint. That's been so critical, Clark, because whenever they have gotten the ball into the paint, it's resulted in points, it seems like. Williams attacking the dish to watch. Toronto grabs the miss. Johnson's got three rebounds now in this one. They're struggling here. They're just one of five to start this third quarter. They've got to loosen up here. Now here's Johnson, knocked away, taken away by Williams. Here's Pierce, passes it to Garnett. And the basket good. Garnett's got his first bucket in this one. After a big improvement defensively in 11-12, the Raptors took a step back in that department last year with all the moving parts, young players they added, and 
gelling that had to be done. You could see why that would have been the case. Now a timeout called by Brooklyn. Well, we do know young teams struggle with D, as you were talking about, Clark, and the Raptors definitely fell into that category last season. They have some athletic players for sure. And, you know, they could get better this year and beyond, Steve, if they work as a unit. Of course, that'll be the key. Yeah, they weren't bad by any means last season. I mean, they would end up near the middle or at least bottom third of every big defensive stat. Uh, but, you know, they made some strides, and I think this year they have to take that next step, and they've got to continue to build on what they have. And Lowry gets it to go. You know, they really aren't putting up any resistance on the low block. That's the fifth consecutive basket inside. And, Steve, these looks they're allowing are almost automatic. Doris Burke has some information for us. Doris? Yes, Kevin. Dwayne Casey was just going over the plan with his team. He said their plan was to run their offense through Lowry. Coach obviously has a ton of faith in his offensive ability and shared that faith with the rest of the players by insisting they get him more involved. The other thing he discussed with them was that they should be forceful with the ball. He said if they see a gap in the defense, they should go straight to the bucket. Clearly some adjustments there had to be made because the time left for a comeback is quickly running out. Kevin, over to you. Thank you, Doris. Here's Augustine following the score by Kevin Garnett. Augustine with it. Now Garnett defending. Gay against Terry. Outside Lowry. Lock at six. Here's Gay. That ball's nice feed that time from Kyle Lowry. Lowry's got four assists in the game. Another good pass, and their offensive execution has been impressive, to say the least. The last four field goals have been assisted. Yeah, passing has kept the defense off balance, but to get assist, you got to make the shots. You know, after the Rudy Gay trade sent Jose Calderon, Kyle Lowry said that now the Raptors were his team. And while that might be debatable, he's clearly got the talent to run a team at the point guard position. Garnett up top. Unloads. Again, Garnett missing. What was the defense doing there? I mean, he is not the guy to give an open look to, and yet they got away with it. There's Gay. The rebound by Garnett. The back to Kyle Lowry, a good passer, also an amazing rebounder for a six-foot-tall guard. He's physical, doesn't mind throwing his weight around. He's, he's confident. You can see how aggressive he is offensively, always looking to draw contact and get to the free throw line. Now here is Lowry after the miss from Blatch. Got that one, and the Nets' lead has been cut to just seven points in the basket from Lowry. Another good offensive possession for him. He's trying to shoulder the load here for his team. Williams against Lowry. And Williams, here we go. Here's Blotch. And the layup's good off the glass. Blotch has got four this quarter. You just can't afford to let somebody get that good position in the paint. Well, it's more than trouble when he does catch it down there, Steve. He's never going to miss from that range. Lowry against Terry. That one's good, and the Brooklyn lead is cut to just seven on the basket from Lowry. Left side, Williams. Sweet little floater. Williams has got 15 points. Gotta love the teardrop. Just put it right over the defender. He presents a defender with a serious challenge. Always. The points coming in bunches as we wrap up the third quarter. It's been a good one. Points coming in bunches as we wrap up the third quarter. It's been a good one.
While we have the chance now, folks, let's go to our State Farm assist of the game. I was hoping we'd get a chance to see this one again. Thank you, Lonnie, and the truck for showing it. But it's uh, passing like this that makes the basketball purists happy. This is the beauty of the game right here. On the court for Toronto to start the fourth. Lowry and Ross pairing up in the backcourt. Jonas Valanciunas is out there with Tyler Hansbro, and it's DeRozan in at the small forward. Well, you can sense the urgency with them now. I mean, right here, they're flat in the first half. But they've come out here in the second half with a lot more fire and a lot more intensity. You can see they're driven to get things done. Now, here is Lowry. Lowry is a feisty, quick, strong point guard, Kevin, and he's a very aggressive defender, gets a lot of steals, and then offensively, I love the way he's developed his long range shot. That's something he couldn't do well when he first entered the league, but now he's a big time three point shooter. And he's also a pretty good defender who really presses up and gets into people. He creates steals and forces turnovers, and that to me is part of what makes him special, utilizing that quickness and strength to disrupt things defensively. Here's Hansbro. The shot's good on the assist by Lowry. And you can feel the, the pattern of this game, guys. They're, they're working it inside, dominating in the paint, getting good shots at will. Well, four of their last five baskets, guys, have been of exactly that variety. Now here's Johnson. The 15-footer. And that one hits back iron. Well, you have to get a hand into his face because that's his range right there. DeRozan with it. Now Kirilenko defending. Ross and the Raptors hit again from deep. And they've set up countless buckets off assists. That's a huge part of what they've been doing here today. A lot of dime dropping going on out there, Steve. Timeout called the Nets. And, you know, for Raptors coach Dwayne Casey from last season, he's wanted to improve the rim protection inside. Now with a little more size, you add Valanchunas, and hopefully the pieces are in place for Casey to build a winning team in Toronto. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Hi, Kevin. Jason Kidd was just going over the plan with his team. It's been a hard-fought game, and he just wanted to give his guys a chance to catch their breath, saying, listen, we're right there. Let's make a push right here, put some pressure on them. Let's come out swinging. Kevin? Always great to hear from you, Doris. Here's Lowry following the basket by Brooke Lopez. Rosen dishes to Valanciunas. And so he draws the foul on the shot, a trip to the line to shoot two. And when you look at this Raptors team, they have size and athleticism. Steve certainly capable of defending well. Yeah, they do have the talent to be good defensively. Some length on the perimeter. They've got Amir Williams inside. I think uh, Valanciunas is an interesting player with defensive capability. So this is a club that has the potential uh, to be pretty good at, at that end of the floor. Williams kicks to Johnson. Here's the three. And it's Brooke Lopez with the foul. That's his third foul of the game. Paul Pierce has checked in for Brooklyn. For Toronto, they've gotten all three of their shots to drop here in the fourth quarter. They came out of the break on a roll. The pass to DeRozan. A baseline J, and he gets it to go. And the Raptors lead by three. Man, an even stronger second half. Tremendous efficiency at the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, I know you know about how the basket can seem like it's 10 feet wide when you're in the zone. That's where they are right now. Now here's Johnson, left side Williams. The shot's good on the assist by Johnson. 17 points for Darren Williams. He is setting this place on fire, fellas. This shooting has been off the charts. Lopez with the block. They retain possession. And Hansbro slams it in. Now Williams. He lobs it up. It's tipped. It's stolen by Hansbro. Fast break Toronto. And Lowry gets it to go. And now a five-point Raptor lead. And an important part of every team's game, a look at the hustle stats for the Raptors. Boy, defensively, they've played with a high energy level, guys. And all the steals we've seen, really a result of that aggressiveness. The number of second chance points they've gotten is also impressive. I mean, they've kept so many possessions alive with offensive rebounds. 
Nice shot's good by Williams. Well, you know, he has shot the ball well, but it has not been contagious. And his teammates, they haven't had the same groove, and that's why we're looking at this result so far. Now, here is Lowry. An easy layup after coming off the pick. Lowry's got the lead. Back up to five now for the rep. Now a timeout call by Brooklyn. One of the stories here, Kyle Lowry getting it done today. They don't seem to have any answers for him. They need to review their game plan and look for a way to cool him off. And let's get this update now from Doris Burke, who's across the way on the sideline. Thanks, Kevin. Jason Kidd had some words for his team over that last break. He was reviewing the strategy to be very clear for their defensive approach against Lowry. He's given them nothing but problems, and Coach was all over his guys, imploring them to up the aggressiveness and attack him defensively. He then made another statement, telling his guys to stay alert and aware when defending the outside shot, saying, quote, they can hurt us on the perimeter if we don't stay right up on them. Gentlemen, some late-game adjustments that could prove crucial in the game's closing moments. Kevin, over to you. And thanks for that story, Doris. Looking at the game for DeRozan, he has 12 points, and he has one steal to his credit as well. But he's done a, a better job than the numbers indicate, really. I think he's been really sound defensively and needs help his club. Shots good by Williams. That's his first three-pointer of the half. Remember, he did make one in the first half as well. Williams against Lowry. Lays it in without an inch of room around him. Lowry's got nine points now in the quarter. They're getting on a roll inside. Their last three field goals have come from inside the paint area. The defense has to make an adjustment. They've got to string together some stops, or at the very least, try to force this team into some bad shots. Now here's Williams. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. He hasn't had as many opportunities at the line as he had in the first half. And both free throws good for Williams. In a crucial spot, he is always so solid at the line. He rarely wastes those opportunities. Lowry against Williams. Lowry kicks to Gay. Hope loose. Stolen by Pierce. Williams attacking. It's in! He has tied up this game. Oh, what a shot. We're seeing the red-hot version of Darren Williams right now. Lowry kicks to DeRozan. Williams against Lowry. Back to DeRozan. Yes! Oh, what a clutch shot. That could be the difference maker. Big, big moment in this game. Got a nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Johnson, the pass to Garnett. Down low, Pierce. It's good. This game is all even. Took advantage of some shoddy defense there. They've got to at least get a finger on it. Toronto's gotten a success rate of just over 50% from three point tonight. Four of seven shooting. Lowry dishes to Gay. And it's out of bounds. The Nets will take it the other way. Got sloppy in a close game. You have to take advantage of every opportunity. It's stolen by Johnson. Coming. Boy, their defense making an impact here late, Kevin. And straight off the steal, Clark. A perfectly run fast break ends in a slam dunk. That could be a huge four-point swing in this game. And so the big win by Toronto in a tight game. And Clark, you know, it was quite a nail-bite. Yeah, it was. Kyle, congratulations on this win. 